let us discuss the factors to consider well constructing a fish pod we have a topography of the land availability of capital availability of labor availability of water and the type of soil while constructing a fish pond topography of the land is very important to get the right pond design you need a relatively flat land because of the terrain a relatively flat land reduces the cost of production because it reduces the cost of machinery such as the use of an excavator factor number two capital availability one requires capital to start any venture fish pond is not any different capital is needed in fish pond construction to pay for hired labor design and construction and a liner if necessary availability of labor is also a key factor to consider while constructing a fish pond where you consider qualified labor to construct the fish pond availability of water remember we discussed in our previous lesson of facts about fish fish live in water so we need water to rear our fish the water should be sufficient and fit for fish farming while constructing a fish pond type of soil is also a key factor because we need the type of soil that is able to retain water to avoid seepage and losses in this course we are learning how to increase productivity reduce cost to get more profits therefore if water is not sufficient fish farming cannot be viable and economical how do we design a fish pond remember that a fish pond has four walls that are usually slanting while constructing a fish pond we have to have a dike what is a dike a dike is a walking working area around the pond a fish pond has four walls that are gentle sloping towards the floor of the fish pond the floor of the pond should be slanting from the shallow to a deep end in the deep end we usually have a harvesting pond the height of the shallow end should be 0.8 meters well the height at the deep end is supposed to be one meter we usually construct a harvesting pond at the floor of the fish pond in the deep end which measures one meter long 0.5 meter wide and 0.5 meters deep remember you cannot construct a fish pond without an inlet and an outlet so an inlet is where we have water coming in and the outlet is the water flowing out an inlet is usually located at the shallow end of the fish pond well the outlet is located at the deep end the outlet is usually used during harvesting as it helps in draining the water after pond design we are now ready to do our ponds construction we first level the ground where we are constructing the fish pond reveling can be done in two ways if the fish pond is small you can do it manually using the farm equipments example jembes and a rake for a big fish pond you can use a tractor to do the leveling after you've leveled the ground we now peg the ground pegging is the act of marking the ground for example you want to construct a fish pond over 20 by 20 meters you measure the land to the actual size of 20 by 20 meters and use a rope and a stick to peg the four corners this first pegging is called the inner pegging we will also have another pegging in the outer surface called the outer pegging the outer pegging is usually measured one meter away from the 
inner pegging and you also use a rope and a stick to mark. After pegging, we now excavate the land. Excavation is done in the inner peg, having in mind that the floor of the fish pond should be slanting. And remember that the shallow end should be 0.8 meters while the deep end is 1 meter. Remember, during our pond design, we discussed that the walls of a fish pond should be sloping. This is achieved by chopping off the area between the inner peg and the outer peg in a slanting or sloping way. We now measure our dike that should be two meters away from the outer wall. Remember that we need a harvesting tank in a fish pond, which now we are going to construct. The measurements of the harvesting pond are one meter long, 0.5 meters wide and 0.5 meters deep. And also we need an inlet and an outlet. The inlet, as we discussed earlier in our design, is usually at the shallow end while the outlet is at the deep end. Depending on the type of soil that you've constructed your fish pod on, to avoid seepage, it is recommended that you use a liner paper. This liner paper covers the whole fish pond and is usually tucked in the dike. After we've constructed our pod, either a liner pod or another pod, we now fill it with water, leaving a free board of 20 centimeters. A free board is a section between the water level and the dike. This usually helps in avoiding predators in the fish pond and also prevents the fish from overflowing out of the fish pond. Once we fill the fish pond, we now do fertilization in the fish pond. This is done by introducing manure in the fish pond to encourage growth of phytoplankton and zooplankton. They are essential natural feeds in the pond for fish feeding. After fertilization of the pond, it is advisable that you leave the pond for two weeks before stocking to allow growth of phytoplankton and zooplankton. After two weeks, you can now stock your fish pond with fingerlings. You can get fingerlings from a certified hatchery. For example, if you are in Kenya, you can get your fingerlings from Kamudanga fish farm located in Machakos.